All right, so earlier this year, Samsung finally launched the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, which is essentially a more affordable variant of the S21 family and a follow-up to the very popular Galaxy S20 FE from 2020. The S21 FE comes with some pretty impressive hardware and today we're gonna check it out in this video. Let's get started. Now the S21 FE was released just a month right before the S22 which kind of puts it in a somewhat awkward place and timing in Samsung's device lineup. Nevertheless, it is a cheaper option when compared to the newer Samsung flagship phones which are a bit on the expensive side. It does have some specs which I think make it a smartphone worth getting, especially if you are after Samsung's fan edition phones. Now if you guys want to check out this phone, I will drop some links in the description below as well as links to some of our other Samsung videos here on Team TeamVirWatch. With that said, let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the physical aspects of the phone. The S21 FE features a design that resembles other Samsung Galaxy S phones like the S22 and the S21 with metal sides and a triple camera module on the upper left corner of the rear panel. The back, however, is made out of plastic, although it does come with a matte finish, which feels nice to the touch. The bottom of the phone houses the USB-C charging port, speaker grill, microphone, and a SIM card slot. There's no headphone jack or micro SD card slot, which has unfortunately been the trend with a lot of smartphones these days. Overall though, the phone feels sturdy and even comes with an IP68 rating, which is nice. There are also speakers on the top and bottom of the phone, which are pretty loud. With that said, however, I did find the bass sound a bit lacking on them. Now the AMOLED display comes in at 6.4 inches, which is the same size as on phones like the Pixel 6. The S21 FE feels a bit more compact though because of the very slim bezels around the Gorilla Glass Victus panel. The screen maxes out at a 120Hz refresh rate, although you do get an option to turn it down to 60Hz to conserve battery life. There's also an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is very fast and responsive. I do like the quality of Samsung's AMOLED panels. Content consumption is very enjoyable thanks to the fluid display and great looking colors and contrast, and overall it's a great looking screen. Now as for software, the S21 FE currently runs in Samsung's One UI 4.1 with Android 12. If you're no stranger to Samsung's custom user interface, then you will feel right at home here. There's a lot of Samsung-centric apps to suit dedicated fans, as well as a wealth of customization options so you can personalize your phone in a more in-depth manner. There is Bixby of course, but you can always choose not to use it. For example, I just stick to the default Google Assistant, which I prefer more in comparison to Samsung's own voice assistant. On the other hand though, if you're after a more streamlined Android experience with less bloat and third-party software, then One UI might not be to your liking. There's a lot of apps which I had to either disable or uninstall, and in short, it will be a vastly different experience from devices like Google Pixels or Nokia phones for example. It should be said, however, that Samsung has improved its update schedules. A lot of its newer phones now get regular software updates, and so far I've gotten decently consistent updates on this phone. Moving on, let's talk about the internal hardware and performance. The S21 FE comes with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset, and you can get the phone either with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and up to 256 gigs of internal storage. Now, the one we have here is the base model with 6 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage, but don't let these somewhat basic specs fool you. For everyday use, the S21 FE can easily power through stuff like web browsing, video and music streaming, social media apps, and such. And while the Snapdragon 888 has been replaced by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the 8 Plus Gen 1, it's not exactly a slow chipset, and it's still a cut above Qualcomm's mid-range 700 and 600 series SoCs. I was able to play some graphically intensive games on the phone like Trials of Mana and Monster Hunter Stories, and during my time gaming on the S21 FE, I didn't experience any lags or freezes. The slightly small 6 gigs of RAM wasn't really an issue, and the Snapdragon 888 definitely proves it's worth here. I suppose that the only issue I have with the S21 FE so far is the 4500mAh battery. Initially, I was only able to get around 3-4 to four hours of screen on time during my first week with the phone. It has improved since though, but it is rare that I get around 6 hours of SOT like I do with the Pixel 6. On the other hand, it does have a high performance chipset as well as a 120Hz display so the battery limitations are a bit understandable. Thankfully, it does have support for fast charging and based on my observations, it was able to charge a lot quicker than my Google Pixel 6. 
Let's talk about the camera. The back of the phone has a triple camera setup with a 12 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultrawide lens. The hole punch in front houses a 32 megapixel selfie camera, which should be more than enough to get good quality on video calls and selfies. Now, I've gotten used to the camera quality on Google Pixel phones, but I do have to say that the S21 FE is no slouch either when it comes to camera quality. The dynamic range on the phone's cameras was mostly good, although color saturation was a bit strong. Of course, this is a subjective affair, but if you're used to the way that Samsung's camera software processes photos, then you'll find little to complain about this one. Night mode was a bit disappointing though. It didn't brighten up images as I'd hoped, and it was barely different from photos taken on the standard camera mode. However, a bit of exposure adjustment got me the results I wanted, and after that, it was almost on par with the night tight photos shot on a Pixel phone. Moving on, video quality on the S21 FE is definitely one of the phone's strong suits. Video stabilization was impressive, and overall, footage shot on the phone was pretty good. There were some instances though where contrast was a bit too strong, so darker parts of clips were almost entirely black. In general though, the video quality on the phone's main cameras was good enough to meet my needs. Now in closing, is the S21 FE worth their cash? While it's not exactly a cheap phone coming in at around $699 in the US or pounds if you're in the UK, and this is just for the base model. For that price, you can probably get last year's Samsung Galaxy S21, which will of course come with better specs. It's not exactly a bad phone given the price to spec ratio, but it will take some consideration as to whether or not you're willing to spend this much on a Galaxy Fan Edition phone. On the other hand, if you're dead set on getting this device before even watching this video, then the Snapdragon AAA chipset, 100 120Hz AMOLED display, good cameras, and overall fast performance should make your experience enjoyable. Now guys, we do have more videos here on TeamViewerY, so feel free to look around our channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.